look at this photograph. Such a burst of color, full of energy, brilliance, and depth. And this one, subtle and gentle, exquisite with perfect shiny spheres of water droplets. This one is one of my favorites. A rich visual splash of earth tones within an elegant antique wood gilded frame, given a new life after collecting dust for a few decades in my parents' basement. Inspired by these photographs, I picked up my watercolor brush to add to the collection. I could stop here and let you simply gaze at these pretty images, but I'm sorry to tell you. Ten years ago, my husband Mark and I bought a rectangular little house on a rectangular green grass lawn. It reminded me of the little plastic houses on the board game Monopoly. We had barely finished unpacking the dishes when my head started spinning with my elaborate plans as to how to transform the outdoor blank canvas into my next work of art. It was time to bring my deepest desire to fruition. Create an outdoor space for Mark. As his primary progressive multiple sclerosis was separating him from the world, I wanted to create a beautiful world around him. Early on in his disease, I was told, Wesley, there's nothing you can do to take away his MS or affect how he is feeling. All you can do is affect the environment around him. Knowing the healing qualities of gardens and outdoor serene spaces, I set out to transform the outside. Meanwhile, he brought life to the inside of our little house. Season after season, we planned during the winter months what our next phase would be as soon as the first thaw appeared, if not sooner. Garden beds were dug, patios and terraces were laid down, trees, shrubs, and perennials were planted. May I brag and mention that I did all this work myself? You say you are impressed? Why, thank you. So am I. Mark wanted color, scent, and to attract butterflies, hummingbirds, and bees. Every view from every window was taken into consideration. One spring, Mark announced he wanted to buy a digital camera and begin photographing what we were growing in the gardens. He has always had an astonishing eye for detail. This has never changed. And as much as I thought I knew about the names, colors, and growing habits of all of the plants in our garden, when he started photographing our flowers, an entirely new world opened up to both of us. Now our kitchen, living room, and bedroom are adorned with the framed photographs I showed you at the beginning of my story. And we have books, tote bags, notebook covers, and blank greeting cards taking our quiet garden retreat out into the world. Over time, our garden has turned my attention away from gardening for others to a much more quiet, inward place. I crave the silence of the early mornings. Well, let me modify that statement. I crave the natural sounds of the birds chirping and the squirrels barking as they chase each other through the tree branches. I call our house a hermitage, as it helps me frame in a very positive light our quiet life, set apart from the community. Five years ago, I wrote in my journal, I have recently decided to regard my time in the garden as the farmers do in the fields. Constant attention during the growing season, keeping tuned to its ever-changing needs. The rhythm of this cycle is very nourishing to me, and now that Mark is getting more involved, it feels more substantial in a new way. And it feeds my need for space and rural living, even though I am not actually able to do this in my life. But with some imagination, I can pull it off. And it feeds the part of me that does need all of that space. Our gardens have opened and strengthened me as an artist and as a care partner. Designing and building them, maintaining them, and living with them now for a decade has solidified what I was told many years ago by those doctors. I do have the ability to affect the environment around Mark. I wrote, all summer he showed me details of flora and fauna I was previously unaware of. We spent hours in peace and joyful exuberance studying his thousands of photographs. We experience a new kind of serenity.